Psalms, Septuagint, Brenton, Translation. Psalm 90, Praise of a Psalm by David. He that dwells in the help of the highest shall sojourn under the shelter of the good God of heaven. He shall say to the Lord, You are my helper and my refuge, my God. I will hope in him. For he shall deliver you from the snare of the hunters and from every troublesome matter. He shall overshadow you with his shoulders and you shall trust under his wings. His truth shall cover you with a shield. You shall not be afraid of terror by night, nor of the arrow flying by day, nor of the evil thing that walks in the darkness, nor of calamity and the evil spirit at noonday. A thousand shall fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you observe and see the reward of sinners. For you, O Lord, are my hope. You, my soul, have made the Most High your refuge. No evils shall come upon you, and no scourge shall draw near to your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge concerning you, to keep you in all your ways. And they shall bear you up on their hands, lest at any time you dash your foot against a stone. And you shall tread on the asp and the basilisk, and you shall trample on the lion and the dragon. For he has hoped in me, and I will deliver him. I will protect him, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will listen to him. I am with him in affliction, and I will deliver him and glorify him. And I will satisfy him with length of days, and show him my salvation. Psalm 91 a psalm of a psalm for the Sabbath day. Sabbath day. It is a good thing to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises to your name, O you Most High. To proclaim your mercy in the morning and your truth by night on a lute of ten strings with a song on the harp for you, O Lord, have made me glad with your work, and in the operation of your hands I will exult. How have your works been magnified, O Lord? Your thoughts are very deep. A foolish man will not know, and a senseless man will not understand this. When the sinners spring up as the grass, and all the workers of iniquity have watched, it is that they may be utterly destroyed forever. But you, O Lord, are most high forever. For behold, your enemy shall perish, and all the workers of iniquity shall be scattered. But my horn shall be exalted as the horn of a unicorn, and mine old age with rich mercy. Rhinoceros and mine eye has seen mine enemies, and mine ears shall hear the wicked that rise up against me. The righteous shall flourish as a palm tree, and he shall be increased as a cedar in Lebanus. They that are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Then shall they be increased in a fine old age, and they shall be prosperous, and they shall make they, they may declare that the Lord God is righteous and there is no iniquity in them. Psalm 92 
For the day before the Sabbath, when the land was first inhabited, the praise of a song by David. The Lord reigns. He hath clothed himself with honor. The Lord has clothed him and girded himself with strength. For he has established the world which shall not be moved. Your throne is prepared of old, and you are from everlasting. The rivers have lifted up, O Lord, the rivers have lifted up their voices. At the voices of many waters, the billows of the sea are wonderful. The Lord is wonderful in high places. Your testimonies are made very sure. Holiness becomes your house, O Lord, forever. Psalm 93. A Psalm of David for the fourth day of the week. The Lord is a God of vengeance. The God of vengeance has declared himself be you exalted, you that judge the earth, and render a reward to the proud. How long shall sinners, O Lord, how long shall sinners boast? They will utter and speak unrighteousness. All the workers of iniquity will speak so. They have afflicted your people, O Lord, and hurt your heritage. They have slain the widow and the fatherless and murdered the stranger. And they said, The Lord shall not see, neither shall the God of Jacob understand. Understand now, you simple among the people, and you fools at length be wise. He that planted the ear, does he not hear? Or he that formed the eye, does he not perceive? He that chastises the heathen, shall not he punish? Even he that teaches man knowledge, the Lord knows the thoughts of men, that they are vain. Blessed is the man, whoever you shall chasten, O Lord, and shall teach him out of your law, to give him rest from evil days, until a pit be dug for the sinful one. For the Lord will not cast off his people, neither will he forsake his inheritance until righteousness return to judgment and all the upright in heart shall follow it. Pause. Who will rise up for me against the transgressors? Who will stand up with me against the workers of iniquity? If the Lord had not helped me, my soul had almost sojourned in Hades. If I said my foot has been moved, your mercy, O Lord, helped me. O Lord, according to the multitude of my griefs within my heart, your consolations have soothed my soul. Shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with you, which frames mischief by an ordinance? They will hunt for the soul of the righteous and condemn innocent blood. But the Lord was my refuge and my God, the helper of my hope, and he will recompense them. Their iniquity and their wickedness and the Lord our God shall utterly destroy them. Psalm 94 praise of a song by David. Come, let us exult in the Lord, and let us make a joyful noise to God our Savior. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and make a joyful noise to him with psalms. For the Lord is great, and a king over all gods. For the Lord will not cast off his people, for the ends of the earth are in his hands, and the heights of the mountains are his. 
for the sea is his, and he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. Come, let us worship and fall down before him, and weep before the Lord that made us. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today, today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation, according to the day of irritation in the wilderness, where your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works. Forty years I was grieved with this generation, and said they do always err in their heart, and they have not known my ways, so I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. That's a very serious thing there. So I pray the Lord God will help us all overcome so that we may be his people and he be our shepherd we listen and obey and love him. And that we put ourselves to doing the things that we need to do together. Not apart, but together. I think our culture has really ruined a lot of what we should be as a church and then Church has adopted the culture rather than being weirdos. They mixed, they mixed the two together. The cotton and the wool, the flax, the linen and the wool. No mixing. Not that all culture is bad or that all of our culture is bad, but there are aspects that have made us too independent, so independent to say that a man must stand on his own two feet without anyone else, no mother, no father, no children, no grandparents, no friends, no neighbors next door, no neighbors down the road, just by yourself. Might as well drop him off in the middle of Alaska in the wilderness and say, God bless you, be warm and be filled. God is sovereign. These things ought not to be, but they are, and no, you cannot say that they are good and true and wonderful, and you can't say that you believe in a dominion mandate and then that dominion means you fashion yourself according to the pattern of this world so that you can take the influence of it for the name of God. God does not need you to do such a thing, first of all, and second of all, that is a lie from the pit of hell. What do you do? What do we do then? Well, business as usual does not work. That is clearly evident. The last few years has taught us that, if not the years before should have, but some of us didn't listen. Some of us were too dumb to hear. I know myself didn't hear certain things about my life until the last several years. I say several, it's very broad. <laughs> So here, business as usual doesn't work. Most denominations have succumbed. The ones here in America, our brothers up north in Canada are all but fallen into authoritarian dictatorship. Our friends and cousins in Mexico are divided, like we are, but in different ways. 
is a culture of death competing with a culture of life. Family values competing with death. Here, we have the same, but people don't want to look at themselves in the mirror because they have the face they deserve. And they don't want to look at the face they deserve. So they want to put makeup on and pretend they're somebody else. This is what most people do. This is what prideful, arrogant people do, and this is what fearful, timid people do. Take the makeup off. Take the masks off. Take your arrogant little attitude that contemns your brother or sister. Humble yourself before the Lord. Pray for them. If you can't meet with them and greet with them, meet with others. Going to church on Sunday and dropping a couple pennies in the offering plate are not working anymore. We used to have logistical needs met society-wide. We had ministers of mercy, ministers of health, ministers of safety, ministers of compassion. We had homes for the outcast, for the wanderer, the sojourner, the poor, the fatherless, the widow. No, not anymore, not you. Go to the government, they say. And then when you do, they'll condemn you and knock you down even further. Because they don't want to look in the mirror at themselves and see that it was their responsibility to love their, their brother or their neighbor as themselves. They don't want to see that because to see that means to admit in ourselves that we have failed. We have failed to keep peace with the very Holy Spirit that has given us life and has given us new life and has brought us to be justified and bringing us through being sanctified unto a glorious new day. No, we couldn't admit those things. I tell you true, do not get caught up in their ways for they will rob you of your inheritance. If you join with them, you will forget. You will be deceived. And what is it to God if he can graft the wild olive into the domesticated olive? He can prune, cut off, graft in as he wills and wishes but they say, no, not so, not so. We have this document here from just a few hundred years ago that says it's not so. Well, I have these documents from thousands of years ago. And my documents were written by those who were moved by the Spirit and led by the Spirit to write and to move as He willed, He being God. My documents trump every one of yours. Oh, but you're not confessional. Who says? You say. You don't know anything. These people speak without knowledge. They hear a tale, tale bearing, from someone else, and it goes down the line, maybe another, and then another, and pretty soon, guess what? They all believe this thing that never was. And still, they don't go to the mirror to look at their own faces. The face that we deserve. Isn't 
is a very tiring game to live amongst the people who declare with their lips for God but with their hearts are far from Him. And then to do so in the midst of a world where it doesn't play by the rules that I always taught growing up. I'm sure many of you find the same. So I was on the, the farther end of it, but I was a Cold War kid. 74. Electronic games and computers were only becoming a very, they were a novel thing as I was growing up. They weren't the rule. They were the exception. Not everybody had them. Those that did were watching a pixel go back and forth like in Pong and Atari. My point being is we were born at a time where the old world and its values were being taught to us while the new world coming wasn't going to be what we were being taught. We all assumed that I certainly did, that the world that I was going to grow up into was going to be similar enough that it would have continuity from one to the next, but it didn't and doesn't. And none of these devices make our lives easier or less stressful. Yes, they can accomplish wonderful things too. You know, we, we have the knowledge of the ages in our back pockets and the cell phone. But most people don't use it that way. It should be. Certainly I wish I had somebody to stand by me, stand alongside, or I could stand alongside you, and we could together learn new things, good things good knowledge. The Library of Alexandria has got nothing on us. We've got so much access to knowledge. Has it made any of us better? Has it made anyone good when only God is good? And you have to think good is perfection, moral perfection based on what standard? Based on God's standard, you see. There's a source, and everything emanates from that source. The source itself determines the standard, because the source itself is the standard. So when we say things like holiness, or perfection, or goodness, and we apply them to God, those standards are far above all of us, and they are unchanging. These are not archaic, antiquated words of meaninglessness. These are words that could have been and should have been your heritage, but they were stolen from many of you. And now I look at America's children and grief every single day. And I look at the church in America and I grieve every single day. As a generalization, it doesn't mean every single church is this way. It's a very broad brush I'm painting with, very, very unspecific. 
focused to in regards to church. When I say church, I am talking about anyone who claims that Jesus Christ is Lord and King, Savior and Master, that he lived in the flesh, he was born of a virgin, that he was crucified on a Roman cross, that he died. He was buried in a tomb, and on the third day he rose again. And then for 40 days, he went and showed himself to various and different peoples. And then he ascended, went up to heaven. That's what I'm talking about when I say church. You believe those things and you truly and sincerely hold on to that, then all the other stuff is fringe at the moment regarding what I'm speaking about now. <laughs> Anyway, we are molded out of clay. God is the one who molded us and made us. Are we literally clay? I would say no, but I mean, we could say, well, we're carbon based life forms, right? What are we made of? What is carbon base? Earth. We are formed of the same stuff we live upon. We are in our own element, so to speak. And the world is very familiar. We understand it. We see it. It's also a testimony to God and to law, and to love, and to rules that we don't quite want to understand, rules of the jungle, the wild, the wilderness, rules of decay, rules of prospering, and flowering, and beauty, and death, and then upon death, new life. That's why the Apostle Paul says, well, how will they know unless they hear? And he was speaking in regards to faith. And who will go unless we send them, right? It's in regards to sharing the gospel, regards to faith, telling people about Jesus. He says, but haven't they heard? He says, I tell you, they have. For the heavens declare the majesty and wonder of God. Every star, every molecule, everything, every, the air in front of your face, the air that you breathe into your lungs, the things that are in your ears and things around your ears, so on and so forth, all of it points to God. No, this machine that's much more complex than a car and also has consciousness and life. No, no, that just happened by accident. No creator. You would not say that with a car. It's evident. It's obvious. Those who deny it are just like the ones I was talking about regarding not wanting to look in the mirror at the face they deserve. And in regards to the face that we deserve, we're not supposed to point at one another and say, ha ha, that's what you deserved. You got what you deserved. Let me beat you down some more. No. These documents that I have from thousands of years ago say to be compassionate and gentle and kind with one another, showing mercy, 
same kind of mercy God showed you. I don't see that much at all. And you bet I get angry at it. I get angry at those things. And sometimes in my anger I sin. Sometimes I don't. I think some people have the idea that all anger is a sin. If that's true, then the Apostle Paul and King David both have made contradictory statements. Put away anger, rage, malice, wrath. The wrath of man does not bring the righteousness of God. Those things are absolutely true. Be angry, but sin not in your anger. Both Paul and David said that. So wait a minute. There's something else going on here. Something deeper to be thought about. There is righteous anger. A father defending his son or his wife. A husband defending his wife from an intruder or from a murderer or any number of things. Soldiers defending what is honorable if they actually keep their oaths, the ones they made to the Constitution, not to the government, but to the Constitution. And they do so before God. There aren't a whole lot of them because they think that's just a formality that they have to do and say and think. And, but they don't actually really believe it, not unto death. How many believe in Christ unto death? So much unto death that you'll take life and love him unto life. It's easier to die. It's quicker. Life, that's another thing. That can be hard arduous, treacherous, steep, rocky. Can also be pleasant with the sunshine, nature, bees and butterflies flying about, fields of food growing in the valleys, green, green valleys, and the glorious sunshine. It's all here the bitter and the sweet. But um, I'm going to tell you, doing it together, faith, living this thing that we believe in faith with one another has less to do with what you do on Sunday mornings and more to do with what you do every other day. I shouldn't say every other day. Every day, including Sunday mornings, but if you think Sunday mornings is the main focus and you don't do every day for the Lord, then you're missing something there. You're missing something. Anyway, sorry to cut into the reading today, but when I see Psalm 94, in the final verse, 11, so I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. And then that, in thinking of my own life, and then others I know, it's a very, very serious thing that we all need to consider very carefully. I'm not teaching you. I'm just sharing. It's a point of view. 
the ones who teach, when they fail, their discipline or condemnation, depending who they are, is much greater. They are held to a higher standard. I don't know enough to be a teacher, but I do love and enjoy sharing everything I learn, learn and know. Just very simple. I don't lord it over others. And those that do aren't standing right. You can go through many Old and New Testament books. This is not something we do. When Jesus said to Peter, we do not lord it over one another as the nations do. He meant it. This was the master himself saying this. He was the one who served and washed others' feet. He did a million things to demonstrate that we don't lord it over others. But what do we do? We lord it over others anyway. So it's an opportunity for everyone to repent. And it's an opportunity for everyone to say, you know what? We haven't been doing this quite right, this living in faith together thing. And we haven't really been ministering to others. And we need to come together, not with airs, not with sparkly la-las and fluffy la-las and balloons and, oh my goodness, I couldn't possibly because my house is a mess and um, I have a headache and just get over it. Just get over it. Get over it and do it. And do it together. When it says build one another up, it means do it together. When it says assemble yourselves together, he's not talking about going to church on Sundays. He's talking about literally being assembled together as parts of the body of Christ. But the minds that are unspiritual have torn these things apart and just made it about the simplistic things. They are included. They're not excluded. But they are not the whole either. Assemble yourselves together is about bonding. It is about loving one another, building each other up. And when you verbally or literally or figuratively come at your brother with a baseball bat and tear into their lives about things you know nothing of and get it so wrong that you destroy actual fellowship, that you create actual division. Well, then it's an opportunity to really reflect and look in the mirror at the face and pray God, give us new faces new hearts. It's not a one and done thing in faith. It's a every day is a new day. You have a new heart at birth, but there's also a process of restoration and bringing little bit by little bit or sometimes a lot all at once. For me, it's been slow. I've been slow little bit by little bit, day by day. Uh, the tortoise and the hare thing. Anyway, we'll finish off with one more song in the order. <coughs> and then I pray you all hear this in the spirit that it's intended, that it's intended in truth and love. 
for God's power and his glory, his wisdom. Psalm 95. When the house was built after the captivity. A song of David. <laughs> Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name, proclaim his salvation from day to day. Publish his glory amongst the Gentiles, his wonderful works among all people. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is terrible above all gods. For all the gods of the heathen are devils, but the Lord made the heavens. Thanksgiving and beauty are before him. Holiness and majesty are in his sanctuary. Bring to the Lord, you families of the Gentiles, bring to the Lord glory and honor. Bring to the Lord the glory becoming his name. Take offerings and go into his courts. Worship the Lord in his holy court. Let all the earth tremble before him. Say among the heathen, the Lord reigns, for he has established the world so that it shall not be moved. He shall judge the peoples in the righteousness. Let the heavens rejoice and the earth exult, and let the sea be moved in the fullness of it. The plains shall rejoice and all things in them. Then shall the trees of the wood exult before the presence of the Lord. For he comes, for he comes to judge the earth, and he shall judge the world in righteousness and the people with his truth. God bless you all today. Amen.